Hello students, welcome to Engineers Academy. Now we are going to solve these two problems. So the first problem says that two cables exerts force on the pipe to determine the magnitude of the projected component of F1 along the line of action of F2. So we are given the coordinate direction angle of F2 and its magnitude. So this is the angle of F2 with the y axis is the 60 degrees. So this is beta angle. And this is the, with the positive z axis, so this is the gamma angle, and the angle with the positive x axis is, is not given. So we can assume that let's say that this angle is alpha. But is we know that uh, cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma, this will always be equal to 1. So since we are required to find this alpha, so we can find this alpha by using this equation and beta and gamma both angles are 60 degrees. So we can say that cos square alpha is equal to 1 minus cos square beta and beta is 60 degrees minus cos square gamma and gamma is also 60 degrees. And if I take the square root then that will be equal to cos of alpha. So we can find it directly. So I have already uh, determined this. So one minus cos square alpha plus minus cos square beta is uh, plus minus 0 0.707. So we can say that cos of alpha is 0 0.707 plus minus. So now uh, cos inverse. If we take cos inverse, then we will be able to find alpha. So cos inverse uh, 0 0.707 will give us 45 degree angle. So alpha is 45 degrees and now if I put uh, minus 0 0.707 so it will be equal to approximately 135. So alpha is 135 degrees. So from the diagram as we can see that this alpha is greater than 90 degrees. So alpha cannot be equal to 45 degrees. So this means that the alpha value for this particular problem is 135 degrees. So now if alpha is equal to 135 degrees then we can find the unit vector along F2. So the unit vector along F2 will be equal to the direction cosines of F2. So the direction of direction cosines of F2 so the F2 is having one component along the negative x axis, one component along the positive y and one component along the positive z axis. So we can say that the component uh, of the unit vector along the x axis is, is minus cos of alpha i. Since we are given this alpha beta and gamma so we can write the unit vector along F2 in terms of these direction uh, coordinate direction angles. Then we can say that this is plus since the y component of F2 is positive so we can write that this is plus and this will be cos of beta j and similarly z component is also positive and that is acting in the positive z direction so we will write that this is plus cos of gamma k. And now we know alpha. So cos of 135 so if I put cos of 135, if we put this as positive, so cos of 135 will uh, ultimately give us that negative component, right. So once we know alpha, beta and gamma, so we do not need to bother about the signs, right. So cos of 135 is we know it is 0 0.7 minus 0 0.707, so minus 0.707i, cos of 60 is 0 0.5, cos of 60 is 0.5, so we can say that this is 0 5j plus 0.5k since gamma is also 60 degree. So this is the unit vector along the line of action of F2. Now we are required to find the projection of F1 along F2. We are required to find the magnitude of the projection of F1 along F2. So let us say that the projection of F1 along F2 this will be equal to F1 unit vector, F1 Cartesian vector multiplied by the unit vector along F2. 
so now we need to find the Cartesian vector representation of f1. So again, uh, this f1 is making 30 degrees with this particular line. So we will have the component of f1 in the xy plane. So this component is the cos component of f1, right? So and similarly, this is this is f1 cos of 30 degrees. And similarly, we can further resolve this x y component of f1 into two further components. So, this one will be the component of f1 along the y axis, and this one will be f1 cos of 30 degrees since it is the component of this, and then it is further making 30 degrees with the y axis. So, this will be f1 cos of 30, which is the magnitude of this component, multiplied by the cos of 30 degrees, right. And similarly, we will have one another component of the rate f1, and this one will be the sine component of this f1 cos of 30. So we can say that this is f1 cos of 30 sine of 30 degrees. So we can write that f1 Cartesian vector. So as we can see that uh, f1 has one component is acting in the positive x, and we, whose magnitude is f1 cos of 30. And f1 magnitude is 30, right? So we can say that this is 30 cos of 30 sine of 30. So 30 cos of 30 sine of 30 in the positive i. Similarly, we have this 30 cos of 30 cos of 30 in along the positive j. So I will write plus 30 cos of 30 cos of 30 will become cos of 30 square right. So, this is cos of 30 along the j and then we have this third component of f1 along the negative z direction that is in the negative k and this component will be uh, 30 sin of 30 from this standing triangle. So, we can say that this is minus 30 sin of 30 in the negative k. So, from this we can take 30 as common. So, this is cos of 30 sin of 30i plus 30 uh, cos square 30 minus sin 30k. This is along j. So, now this is the Cartesian vector representation of f1 and we can simplify it. So, this is 30 cos of 30 into sin of 30, a cos of 30 multiplied by sin of 30. So, this is 0.433. So, this is 0 0.433 i plus cos square 30. So, cos of 30 squared. So, this is 0 0.75. 0 7, 5 j and minus sin of 30 is 0 0.5 sin of 30 this is 0.5 so 0.5 k. So, this is Cartesian vector representation of f1 now we can take that dot, dot product. So, the projection of f1 along f2 magnitude is equal to we need to write 30 and 0 0.433 i plus 0 0.75 j minus 0 0.5 k into the unit vector along f2 which is minus 0 0.707 i plus 0 0.5 j plus 0 0.5 k. So, now we will multiply since it is the dot part. So, we will multiply the corresponding components. So, that will be 30 and then 0 0.433 into minus 0 0.707 and i dot i is 1 then 0 0.75 into 0 0.5 and j dot j is 1 and then minus 0 0.5 into 0 0.5 and k dot k is 1. So, this will be the magnitude of uh, the projection of f1 along f2. So, I will find it directly using calculator. So, 30 multiplied by 0 0.433 into minus 0 0.707 plus 0 0.5 into 0 0.5 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 pl
plus 0 0.75 into 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 into 0 0.5 this gives us the magnitude equal to minus 5.43 minus 5.43 pounds so the minus signs tells us that the projection of f1 along f2 is acting in the opposite direction of the unit vector of f2 so this means that the projection of uh, f1 along f2 is acting in this direction like this and the magnitude of the projection of f1 along f2 is 5.43 pounds now in the second problem it is said that determine the angle theta between the two cables attached to the pipe. So one cable is this at which F2 is applied and we have one cable here at which F1 is applied. So if we, we can find the angle, so if we take the dot product of the position vectors of F1 and F2 along the line of action of F1 and F2. So we can say that let's say that R1 is the position vector along the F1 dot product with the position vector along F2 and that will be equal to R1 magnitude R2 magnitude cos of theta between these two ropes. So again we can say that cos of theta is equal to R1 position vector r2 position vector divided by r1 magnitude multiplied by r2 magnitude this is simple multiplication this is the dot product unit vector along f1 will be equal to r1 position vector divided by its magnitude so since we know the unit vector along f1 this is the unit vector along f1 this is the magnitude of f1 f1 times the unit vector so we can say that we know that u we know u f1 so if i break this this is r1 uh, position vector divided by its magnitude and then the dot product with r2 divided by its magnitude so we can say that cos of theta is equal to the unit vector along f1 dot product with the unit vector along f2 so now we have the unit vector along f1 we have the unit vector along f2 so we can take the dot product so i can write that cos of theta and the unit vector along f1 is this as we have here so this is 0 0.433 i plus 0 0.75 j minus 0 0.5 k and dot product of f2 that is minus 0 0.707 i plus 0 0.5 j plus 0 0.5 k so again we can multiply the i component i j with j and k with k so i will do it directly Our we have determined this already right so if i divide this by 30 so we will be able to find that dot product right since this is 0.433 into we have already done this right so we have multiplied the corresponding components but we have uh, multiplied it with 30 so if i remove this so this is that same uh, 0.433 into minus 0 0.707.75 into this so this gives us minus uh, 0 0.181 so minus 0 0.181 and if I take cos inverse of this value so we will be able to find that theta. So cos inverse of this answer so the angle is 100 degrees. So the angle between these two cables is 100 degrees. So this is the magnitude of F1 along the line of action of F2 and both f1 and f2 are both the cables are making 100 degree angle with each other so this is the solution of these two problems i hope you people would have understood uh, the solution 
that uh, how we can find the projection of one force along another kindly subscribe my channel and like this video if you people want me to solve such more problems from engineering statics by hitler 14th edition